so much. Sweet. Well, hello, everyone. It's good to be here. Is the mic working? It's all good? Yeah. yeah. Perfect. I bring you greetings from Ottawa, the other place. <laughs> it's uh, wonderful to be here. So my presentation this evening will be looking at black Christianity and racism, racism in the British context. And uh, you go ahead and turn mm -hmm. the slide. So the murder of George Floyd on 25 May uh, 2020 shocked the world. And one of the repercussions of what happened as a result because uh, of course George Floyd was killed when he was in police custody, was that it inspired UK policymakers to look at the UK's own struggle with racism. So this was part of a globally influential event uh, in terms of uh, race relations and of course in terms of uh, racism as it was caught on camera, uh, it was recorded. And so here in the bottom right hand corner, we have uh, a large assembly that took place in New Trafalgar Square. And so the, this moment really galvanized the global community to really consider this question of racism. And in particular, my project looks at how this went about uh, growing and uh, developing in the British context, but in, uh, with respect to specific regards to racism as the kind of, uh, well, the religion as the framework of analysis. And so you're welcome to go ahead and move to the next slide. Uh, in the British context, Nigerians work with one of the largest black populations. I myself am Nigerian American. Uh, and the, I believe there's about 200,000, I think 190,000 uh, in terms of the official statistic of Nigerians living in the UK. Um, another one of the largest communities is the Caribbean community, of course. And so my project, which I'm working on at the moment, looks at how uh, black Christians, specifically with regards to Nigerian and Caribbean Pentecostals in Britain, leverage their religious platforms to combat racism. Uh, my project builds upon my PhD thesis, which looked at Pentecostalism and development in Nigeria, but it's a separate standalone project, uh, and it, the kind of driving inspiration behind this project very much is bridging academic research with public engagement. Um, so that's that. And here, uh, Nigeria is an important case study, not just in the sense of it represented uh, a, the country of interest for my PhD thesis, but there are important transnational elements that can be assessed, and my project will be looking at a number of these when it comes to how Nigerian migrants to the UK, how they bring their faith with them, how they bring their religiosity with them, and how that manifests. Uh, so we can move to the, the next uh, slide. So one of the main case studies for my project at the moment is the Redeemed Christian Church of God. The Redeemed Christian Church of God is one of the largest, most socio-politically influential indigenous Pentecostal churches in Nigeria. Uh, it is also the UK's largest black religious organization. And you might be surprised to know they have eight parishes in Cambridge. They have more than 850 parishes in, across the UK. And so earlier I mentioned this notion of transnationalism. Well, this is kind of a, a clear illustration of that, okay? So in the upper right-hand corner, well, actually, I'll start with, this is the logo of the RCCG. Anyone in Nigeria or familiar with Nigeria's kind of religious ecosystem would know this logo. It's probably the most recognizable religious brand in the Nigerian context. In the lower, lower right-hand corner, we have uh, Pastor Enoch Adeboye, who is the head pastor of the RCCG, uh, visiting with uh, Ban Ki-moon, the head of the UN. And in the upper right-hand corner, we have, in the middle, is the president of Nigeria visiting with uh, Pastor Adeboye as well. So we see the political influence of this church, the access that they have to key uh, uh, centers of power globally. Next slide, please. So this is what a service looks like at the RCCG. This is the main auditorium, and it seats about three million people. So three million, indeed. And I've been there, I conducted research, I tracked down pastors in this very auditorium, which was not easy. We were, you know, three million people, but uh, it was worth it. So I think this is a, a, a typology of religions. The scale is not necessarily something that we're very familiar with here in the British context, but it's coming. And it's coming by way of Pentecostals. Pentecostalism also is the fastest growing denomination of Christianity globally. Um, and increasingly, and I know my time is running out, but just so you know, across the world, in terms of how it's influencing politics, it's becoming almost impossible to get elected without local Pentecostal support. We see this in the United States with Donald Trump and how the evangelicals put him in office. We see this in Brazil with Bolsonaro in the same context. We see it in South Africa as well. Next slide, please. This is the RCCG. 
Uh, in the British context, on the left, we have Pascha Agu, the Rupru, meeting with Theresa May. So this shows how Nigerian Pentecostals in the British context, how they're gaining political influence. Essentially, thank you so much. Essentially, in the British context, very much the RCCG's Jesus House Parish, which is in London, uh, is in Red Cross. It functions as a, I see has nodding, perhaps you're familiar with that, that parish. It functions as a place where politicians and prime ministers go essentially to court the black vote, okay, in the British context, in terms of the political dimensions of that. But this is an interesting illustration of the kind of wedding of religion and politics, okay? Uh, up at the top, we have Pastor Agu meeting with Jesse Welby, and in the bottom, we have former UK Prime Minister David Cameron meeting with Pastor Agboye, okay? So next slide, please. And this, going back to the point about the um, killing of George Floyd. What that did, as I mentioned earlier, is it galvanized the international community. But what it also did was it inspired a lot of religious leaders in the British context to speak out and to engage with programs, putting on essentially public representations of what they're doing in order to combat racism in the British context. So these are just some examples of that. Uh, next slide, please. You have to wrap up soon. Absolutely. <laughs> and this is the last slide. Okay. So in terms of Pentecostalism, I think it's important to note the political dimensions of it. Um, here, this is Boris Johnson visiting Jesus House, okay? So when I talk about the political influence of these Pentecostal, black Pentecostal churches, uh, I'm, I'm not, I, I mean it. They're extremely political influential, and they're getting even more so. And my project will be examining how these churches, these black churches, leverage their religious institutions, their theologies, or to combat racism, uh, in particular looking at black populations in majority white countries. And you, Britain will be my case study. So that's my presentation. Thank you so much.